Hey guys, and welcome to the Batcave. I've just managed to get my hands on a bunch of the new Batman movie figures in the DC Multiverse collection from McFarlane Toys. These figures weren't supposed to be available on most platforms in the UK, like Forbidden Planet, things like that, until later this month, a week or so before the release of the movie. But I just popped to a local store and there they were. So I got very excited, bought them all, and I thought I'd unbox them and open them all with you guys on camera. Because if you can't tell, I am a big fan of the DC Multiverse line. They're very cool figures and uh, I've got a bit of a problem with collecting them. Anyway, let's get into it. So straight off the bat, the normal packaging for these figures is the same with all the DC Multiverse packages. And they're quite simple, but quite effective. I'm a fan of front boxes having a big window to show off the figure. A lot of uh, figures these days have like loads of crazy artwork on the box and only show you like half the figure. At the end of the day, the figure should be good enough to be its own advert. So I'm glad that they show the entirety of the figure on these. And then they just have a cool shot on the back using the figure in a pose. This one looks very cool. There's also a collect them all thing along the bottom showing the full line. This one shows... Catwoman, Batman, the Riddler, and the Bat-Cycle. I didn't get the Bat-Cycle. Now I'm sad. I got the rest of them, though. So, we'll go straight in, straight away, open this bad boy up, and see what the figure looks like. I'm probably just going to fast-forward these bits. I always try my absolute hardest to open these figures without damaging the boxes, because I always have that internal struggle with... The things that I collect. Do I unbox them or do I leave them in the box? At the end of the day, the collector side of me is like, ooh, leave them in the box, keep them pristine. They'll be worth more money. But who am I kidding? I'm never going to sell my collection. So normally I end up unboxing stuff. Okay, and here is the Penguin figure. The articulation on these is very, very stiff. And it's the same with most of the multiverse figures. Like, I don't know how well you can hear this. You hear that? It's very, very stiff, which I actually prefer. There's nothing worse than trying to pose a figure, you're putting it in a position and its arms just flopping down or its leg doesn't hold its weight. You don't get that with these. They're very, very sturdy, very, very strong. They're weighty. This one in particular is very, it feels solid. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of weight to Colin Farrell's Penguin. Looking at the face, I mean, it goes the same as the actual footage from the film. I wouldn't in a million years say that that's Colin Farrell. I think it would take you a lot of time to convince me that that was based on Colin Farrell if I didn't already know who it was. Um, overall, you can't actually open the, the leather coat, which is a shame. I quite like it when they have movable, not necessarily removable, but movable clothes and accessories. That's always a plus. There's like the hanging down bits that are loose, but it kind of joins at the edge of the suit here, and that's where it stays. Overall, it's not much, there's not much to say about this figure. It's a guy in a purple shirt, tie, and a jacket. The face looks pretty good. There's no paint spills or anything like that. Everything's quite neat and tidy. I spent many years collecting many uh, types of figures from Hasbro. I got There's a massive row here in our office of the Star Wars Black Series stuff. And then up here, I've got all the Power Rangers Lightning Collection stuff. I, I like the Hasbro figures, but when you hold a McFarlane toy next to a, uh, next to a Hasbro toy, you can feel the difference in quality. But yeah, I like the weight to this. I like that there's very rarely paint spills and overlaps, which Hasbro are terrible for. So yeah, overall, this is a nice figure. Multiple points of articulation. He bends at the knees, the ankles, the ball of the foot, which is cool. The hands, the elbows, and the head all turn. And the shoulders. And we have a full rotation in the shoulder joint, which is always uh, a plus if you like to pose your figures. What, what more do you want from a penguin figure, right? Awesome job. Of course, we also have, as with every DC Multiverse figure, a collectible card in the back of the case. I always try and cut these out nice and neatly with my knife, just so I don't damage either the box or the card. Okay, so there's the card. One thing that has always kind of confused me with the DC Multiverse line is they tend to mix up whether they use artwork, actual film or TV photos of the character, or they use the figure itself for the picture. It seems to be like a lucky pick. I don't know. Some figures have artwork, some ones don't. Uh, this one is one of the figure, and it's the same picture that's on the back of the box. So not too much effort there. Again, the collector side of me, I actually keep all of my cards in a folder, which is pretty cool. I'm still working my way through sorting this out, but that will go in this villains page. I'll have that later on. Okay, let's move on to bad guy number two, the main villain, so we think so far, of the Batman, the Riddler. 
I won't talk too much about the box, although this one is actually a little damaged, which is disappointing. But it's very, very similar to the Penguin box. The Collect Them All figures on the back are Catwoman, the Penguin, Batman and Bat Cycle. So by the looks of it, from this line, it's only the Bat Cycle that I'm missing. And the picture is one of the figure unraveling uh, some duct tape, which is very cool. A very cool shot from the movie. Let's get him out. Okay, here we go. Straight off the bat, there's a few more details in this figure than there was in the Penguin one. Again, very, very stiff articulation on the figure. It kind of feels like it's going to snap, but then it just locks into place. Oof. I really like the shade of green on the jacket. I think it's uh, very military, very serial killer-esque. Uh, the logo that comes, it looks like it's peelable, but it's not on his left breast pocket. It's a very cool take on the Riddle logo. He has some pretty swish army boots on. I think it's all the same points of articulation as the Penguin. We have an ankle one, which actually has a, a ball in it. So we've got full angular rotation of the ankle, which I don't think... Uh, Penguin kind of does, actually. I lie. Yeah, we've got ankle, ball of feet, knees, hips, groin, wrist, elbow, shoulder. Full rotation of the shoulder. And head. Oh, head's a bit stiff. Okay, head doesn't move too much on this one. Um, the goggles look cool. You can kind of see the eyes. They look a bit twisted underneath the figure. And then it looks like he's wearing like some kind of see-through clear bag. I'm sure you can see better on the close-ups that I'll film after this. But yeah, it's a very interesting take on the mask. I'm guessing it's based on the actual costume. So that's a side of him we haven't seen, really. It's like a clear half see-through back of the head. And again, I have speculated in previous videos about the Batman, if the Riddler's face in this, if Edward Nashton's face is in some way damaged or scarred or misfigured. And uh, yeah, this doesn't give us any hints whether that's right or not, but the trailers have been very careful to not show us his adult face. So maybe. We'll see. Overall, it does its job. It looks exactly like the Riddler from the movie that we know. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to start displaying these. Oh, as for accessories, I forgot to touch on accessories for Penguin. He comes with a variation on hands, a fist, and like a gun finger thing. The Riddler comes with this weird little... I don't know, what is that? Like a wallpaper scraper? <laughs> I don't know, that's really strange. I guess it's some kind of murder weapon. Okay, let's pop this card out as with the Penguin, nice and carefully, without stabbing myself in the hand. By the way, I apologize if you can hear anything in the background. There is a class going on in the gym outside. Ugh. At some point, a few of you have requested a tour of my collection and the Batcave itself. And it is very much a Batcave. There is literally a martial arts gym at that door downstairs and upstairs. And then there's a gym underneath the office where we are now. So I will give you a tour of the actual Batcave at some point if you guys are interested. Again, if you are, let me know in the comments down below while I struggle to get this card out. Okay, so again, this card has gone with a picture of the figure, and again, it's the same figure uh, picture that's on the back of the box with the duct tape. I'm gonna actually read out what it says on these cards, you know, because it might give us some clues. So the back of the Riddler card says, the Riddler has quickly established himself as Gotham's deadliest threat yet. This enigmatic masked killer has devised a sinister series of puzzles and tortuous devices to entrap Gotham's elite and publicly unmask the city's darkest truths. Very cool. It doesn't really reveal anything new, but still very, very cool. The data file for the Penguin, aka Oswald Cobblepot, is the Penguin, otherwise known as Oswald Cobblepot, is the proprietor of Gotham's exclusive nightlife hotspot, the Iceberg Lounge. While this shady crook is known for running his mouth, he harbors not-so-secret designs on running the city's criminal underworld. Cool, so pretty much everything we already know about the, the Penguin as well. It's pretty cool that he'll be running the Iceberg Lounge. I love that. Now that we've got the bad guys out of the way, let's get on to the good guys. Or the grey guys. We'll start with Catwoman. So, not a lot to say about the box as always. The picture on the back is very cool. Again, it is making use of the figure in a pose. I'll cut to a close-up of that if I can. But it's cool. They've got a cool set with a neon light of a hotel. And uh, Selina scaling the building with a rope carrying her whip. Very, very cool. Let's get her out. Okay, so Selina, the first thing to take in is is a lot, a lot lighter. Feels a lot more, I don't want to say flimsy because I don't want to give off the impression that it's a bad quality figure. It's a great quality figure, but when you compare it to how kind of thick and weighty the Riddler and Penguin were, she does feel a lot more, let's go with fragile. I'm sure that won't be the case in the movie though. Again, same points of articulation. 
A lot less stiff though. I guess the less dense the plastic is, you can hear the difference, I'm sure. It's a lot more flexible. But again, we've got a ball ankle, ankle joint, ball of the foot, elbows. This one's actually got a kind of ribs, diaphragm, core point of articulation there, where she can move properly. Again, full rotation of the shoulders, elbow will go right in. I love that. She can literally reach up and scratch her own face, which a lot of plastic figures can't do. She can really get her hands in there. You can, yeah, the poses you can put these figures in are just fantastic. They're not really like rivaled by Hasbro at all, in my opinion, in terms of posability and articulation. They just look great. The leather looks fantastic. It actually looks like leather, which I imagine... I'm no toy maker, but I imagine doing that with plastic is no easy task. The eyes are they're pretty good. One thing with when you have small uh, eyes like this on many figures is they're slightly like misplaced on each eye, so it makes them look a little bit bonkide. This one looks good. It looks like she's looking slightly to her right, and she looks very mysterious. The eyebrows are well coloured. Overall, lovely figure. Let's get oh oh accessories. Let's get her whip out. Okay, they've gone with a very cool way of doing this this whip. They could have just given her a bit of plastic like this that she holds and looks like a whip, but they've actually made it so you can twist and bend it any way you want, which is really cool. So you can kind of pose it, you can roll it up, she can carry it like that. That's very cool. They've gone the extra mile with that, which uh, I'm sure all of you toy collectors like me will very, very much appreciate. Very cool. Let's leave it slightly in the shape of a question mark, just to go with the Riddler. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay, let's get out the card and see what the description says. Once again, we have the same picture on the collectible card as we have on the back of the box, which I'm pretty pleased with because it's a cool picture. The data file says, real name, Selena Kyle. Selena Kyle is a mysterious figure who is quietly infiltrating Gotham's seedy underbelly to further her own agenda. Her fierce attitude and tenacious agility are the perfect tools to excel as a cat burglar. But hidden underneath the array of identities and the motorcycle leathers is a protective soul who's more at home with the city's strays than its citizens. It's just such a perfect description of Selena Kyle. Again, nothing in particular to this world's, this version of Selena Kyle, but the character at her core is described absolutely perfectly there. Okay, the one we've all been waiting for. The one that I've been excited to open. The Batman. Here we go. Already, without even unboxing him, he looks phenomenal. This is one of the coolest looking Batman figures I own already. Okay, when I glanced at that earlier when I picked it up, I wasn't sure if the picture on the back of the box was just a screenshot from the movie, which I personally find very lazy. I prefer it when they do something with the figure or they use some nice original art for the box. Uh, but no, they've done a fantastic recreation of the scene from the trailer where Batman uses, uses his grappling hook to bring himself up through flights of stairs. Very, very cool. Perfect use of light in there as well. Okay, ooh. Let's unbox him. And there we go. There he is out of the box. Again, I'm assuming there'll be some close-ups. Uh, overlaid over my voice here to, so you can have a good look at him for yourself. But straight away, the detail in the costume is fantastic. I feel like the first thing my eye picks up on is the kind of chest armor looks more gray than it does kind of metallic. I feel like in the movie, from the trailer, the vibe I get is a bit more, well, metal, I guess. It looks more armorish. I am just going to look at a picture on my computer here to see if I'm talking a lot of nonsense yeah okay just quickly comparing this to some images from the movie the first thing that comes to my mind is how flat the colors are that the shoulder pads for one look plastic where i feel like in the movie they should be more metallic more metal looking so uh, i don't want to say lazy but i feel like just a gentle dry brush of some silver paint over the highlighted parts of the armor would go a long way on this and i'm very tempted to do that but i also don't like messing with these figures in case i mess them up but overall it looks very cool. He's got everything that he should have. His utility belt has got lots of cool gadgets on it. His wrist gauntlets are very cool. The only thing I've just noticed is he does have the classic Batman spikes, but I'm not sure if they've been made out to look like leather straps in this rather than functional usable blades or anything like that, like we see in Batman Begins. 
Uh, the actual bat symbol on his chest again looks very plastic. Yes, I know this is a plastic figure, but when you compare it to things like, let's look at Selena, her clothes actually kind of look leather, right? So does Penguin's coat. It's got a real leather look to it. So you'd be able to, you kind of have the expectation that they'd be able to make these things look a little bit more metal than they do. And again, I think that would just be as simple as dry brushing some silver paint over it. Here, the leg straps are kind of lazily painted as well. They're just the same color as the trousers. And again, I feel like they could have put a bit more effort into that and differentiated the colors by, you know, showing that they are actually different materials. It's just lazy painting overall. But I mean, if that's going to stand on your shelf from a fair distance, it looks phenomenal. It looks like Robert Pattinson's Batman. And uh, I'm very happy. Ironically, looking at his eyes, he is looking up to the top left of his eyes and Selina is looking to the right. I really like the length of the cape on this Batman as well, not just from the figure, but from you know the actual real costume. It's a really nice length. It comes to just below his knees, where when you look at more traditional Batman styles, it kind of comes to his heels. And if you've ever worn a cape, I actually have, don't ask why, but capes are super, super inconvenient. They get in your way. And as a martial artist myself, I can't even imagine trying to fight people with a cape flipping around. And yeah, I, I, I was Batman in a Batman short film many years ago. And there's a scene doing a spinning hook kick and the I do the kick and I end up with my face just just blind. Blind as a bat. Anyway, overall, pretty cool figure. I'm qu quite happy with it. It's going to make a fantastic addition to my display. I now think I have... Let's see. One. This is my 22nd different version of Batman in my collection. Now that I've said that out loud, that seems absolutely mental. But that's it, there we have it. That was the Penguin, the Riddler, Catwoman, and Batman, the DC Multiverse figures by McFarlane Toys. I can't recommend these enough. I paid $17.99 each for these and had a further 5% discount from Firestorm Games. Go and check Firestorm Games out. The link may be in the description down below if I remember to add it. They're an awesome company. They're actually local to us and they are honestly fantastic. I picked these up completely by chance. I didn't think they would have them in because looking at UK websites, they were all end of February, beginning of March. So this was a big surprise. I was over the moon. I'm going to shut up and go and edit this video so you guys can see it. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below which figures you'd like to see next in this line. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm going to buy them all because I have a problem. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Don't forget to return to the Batcave for more Bat content. See you guys.